Welcome back to Planet Explorer. For those just tuning in, I'm Robbie Shingler, the co-founder and chief strategy officer of Planet. And today, it's my deep privilege to have a conversation with Robert Cardillo. Robert has a distinguished career as former director of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency from 2014 to 2019. Prior to NGA, Robert served in leadership positions with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. From 2010 to 2014, Robert managed, edited, and delivered the President's Daily Brief to President Obama and Vice President Biden and served on the Deputies Committee of the National Security Council. Robert has been in imagery intelligence for almost 40 years, and it means a lot to us at Planet that earlier this year, Robert chose to join us as the Chief Strategist and Chairman of Planet Federal. So first of all, welcome to Planet Explorer, Robert. Thanks, Robbie. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Me too. So looking, looking back, though, on your career, You've been out for the last couple of years. What are some of your reflections? Um, well, first of all, as you kindly covered, I had the most fortunate of careers. But if I expanded even beyond those leadership positions I had towards the end of my career, I got introduced to the business before it was introduced to the world. It was a, mm. it was a closed system. And this is before people even knew the NRO existed. Uh, right the NRO, you couldn't say those three letters right. back in those days. And so, again, that's where some good fortune came into because you just really had to be lucky to get assigned to the agencies that I was assigned to. So if I think of my career as bookends, what I really like about it is I was lucky to get introduced to a very closed business, hmm. um, highly secure, very sensitive, um, and very controlled. And over the arc of 35 plus years, I ended my service uh, to our nation in what I would call a transition period in which all of those things still matter, you know, classification, protection, security, et cetera. And yet the world had introduced itself to that, um, that model through companies like Planet. And so I was a Again, I was fortunate to be able to steer a little bit through that last segment of my career. Um, but I think the fact that I had that early experience gives me good grounding in order to lead us into the, the proper direction. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, I mean, you've spoken about how the Earth observation community and ecosystem can play a, a really strong role to shine lights on events that are happening around the world uh, in areas that um, aren't known to a lot of people and how that's, that's actually quite American. It's, uh, it, it's something that, uh, that can restore America's leadership as a beacon of trust and transparency. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? So, again, I had the good fortune to have that baseline analytic career core tradecraft applications. But then I spent most of my time towards the end of my career in rooms, some of them shaped in an oval, in which I was existing at kind of the confluence be between that, that information service, right, the, 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 the assessment or the anticipated event at their point of decision. They had to make a decision. Yeah. And one thing it became quite clear to me is that you make better decisions when you have better information. I mean, I, I know that sounds rather simplistic, but it, it caused me to redouble my efforts to reduce confusion, increase clarity, declutter a noisy environment. And you just described the reality of our world, which is all of those things. It's more connected, of course, but those connections can sometimes come in orthogonal to one another and, and sometimes counter one another. Let's face it, sometimes there's bad information out there. Yep. It's not accurate. That too can inform or lead to a poor decision. And so back to your broader question about the U.S. role, you know, I, I, think, I think one of the founding truths 
of our sense and, and, and social compact that we've created it between the government and governed is this, is that shared information can lead, should lead, to shared perspective, and shared perspective can lead to mutually beneficial outcomes. And so to me, that then redounds all the way back to, boy, if we could just elevate that information baseline, if we could get, that would give us that shared frame of reference, and maybe, just maybe, increase clarity and, and thus improve outcomes. And that shared frame of reference is context, right? It, it allows for people to understand and anticipate um, not only what things are actually emerging, but, but actually to, in, to try to intersect it in such a way that leads to greater understanding and de-escalates right. conflict. I mean, I'm gonna get very basic here. Please. We're all just trying to get through the day, okay? We're all just trying to make it to the other side, whatever that is, and it could be, could be you know, for pleasure, or for work, or for family, and and again, we make better decisions when we have more information about our environment, right? And about um, uh, things that could assist in that transition from here to there, or could put it at risk, whether that's weather or traffic or a bad actor, right? All those things could inhibit our movement from here to there. And so central, again, to that frame, and by the way, I was, fortunate enough to be invited into a community that you know created maps and those maps are frames of reference and, and give people context and they give people confidence hmm. you know if, if if you don't have a sense of where you are right it's a little difficult it's more difficult to confidently move to where you need to be and likewise if you're unclear about the risks associated with that movement and by the way, I'm making this all you know, very physical, but it could be equally true to a mental move, you know, from mm -hmm. I have this belief and I'm moving to that belief. Both of those are assisted through that you know, increased light, transparency, awareness. And, uh, and again, that was, I guess, the through line for my career. Well, I, I really like how you're linking how information gives confidence to decision making. So that, that is, that, that, that's really good. Um, but do you see, let's dig in a little bit deeper here. Right. Do you see, um, how do you see that shared information or more information, especially with a proliferation of information, um, what are the downsides of that? Do you, do you think that there's something that we as a community, especially in Earth observation in particular, but in general, like what are the downsides of, of much more transparency and access yeah. to information. Um, I can think of three, and I reserve the right to change three to four by the time <laughs> I get to three. Um, the first one's rather straightforward. As you and I have already observed, the world is filled with information flows. We're inundated with it. And that can actually inhibit action, right? You could be overwhelmed with yeah. data. You can't change or you can't morph that data into information, much less an insight, and so you, it can be paralyzing, right? Just, it's just too noisy. I alluded earlier to the point that not all data is of the same value. Some could be less good, just as it's less resolved or less assured, and some can be actually bad. There are, you know, there are other humans in the world that might gain an advantage by submitting into your environment information which is not correct. And so that too can inhibit an outcome. But I think the, I think the biggest risk is the fact that I've got all my information flows, right? All the feeds are good. They're all being verified as accurate and assured. But it's, it's d data without analysis. So I don't, know what to, I don't know what to make of it. And that too can be paralyzing. And, and, and so part of the reason I'm spending so much time in, in this chapter of my career is, is, is trying to get us across the line. Whereas early in my career, I spent a lot of time seeking out that data or that image because it was very hard to find. Now we all have lots of images and lots of data and I'm really trying to help us get to answers, the analytics, if you will, on top of that data. Right. 
Um, but for, uh, again, with so much access to, uh, to new information and decision support tools that are coming online, there are many more actors who are going to have access to this information yep. that was once a coveted few. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of where I want to uh, explore a little bit more, which is like, how can you balance some of the, the kind of responsibility uh, and the ethics around uh, having this level of data transparency and tools uh, with, say, human rights concerns uh, from, from maybe nefarious actors? Yeah. Boy, it's an important question. Yeah. Um, and uh, why don't I open up one layer? You might want to go to another layer after that. But, but let me, st I believe strongly at the top, Robbie, that all things being equal, and I know they aren't, but all things being equal, human beings, will make better, and I equate to better as improved, enhanced, mutually beneficial decisions if they have good information flows. Mm -hmm. Now, again, not universal. People can always make mistakes, but, but I think that's in generally true, general true. I'm also quite comfortable with the fact that if we're thinking about peer competition or, or international tensions with, with other countries that might have different views of ours with respect to outcomes or objectives, I still believe that the shared information can, can uh, enable the outcomes that we seek because I think one of the things that's wonderful about our country is, is, is freedom of thought and, and, and individual um, um, strength that, that, you know, look, Yes, I'm part of this system called America, and yes, I will be a, you know, a contributor to that. And we're also the America that tightens our shoes, pulls up our bootstraps, you know, climbs that hill, you know, we'll overcome. It was a long way to say, Robbie, I think even in an even playing field, which by the way, I think is gonna be pretty normal, technology flat, information access flat, I, I, I like our advantage because We've got that innovation spirit. We've got that ingenuity bug. We've got that, you know what? I'm gonna figure out a better way kind of attitude. And that's why I still feel strongly and very confidently about America's future. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, peer competition or as some people are calling the great power competition that's happening right now. Um, how do you think this, uh, this level of, of transparency and uh, unbiased fact um, will play a role in that. Uh, do you think that that is part of an advantage of what the, the next new normal will become? I do, and, and by the way, I'm gonna answer your question, but I wanna challenge a little bit of what Please. I'm interpreting as an assumption in there. That that state of affairs, this you know, international tension and or uh, uh, peer competition is new, and it isn't. Uh, it's always been thus, you know. At whatever age, eon, you know, period in which we started to come together in groups. My group's over here. Your group's over there. We don't sound like you. You look a little different, et cetera, et cetera. We we form teams, right? And teams have benefits because oh, we're on the same team. I trust you. You trust me. I don't know that other team, maybe we need to create some sort of inhibitor to keep them from bothering us, et cetera. I've obviously way oversimplified our global political system, but let's face it, we're, we've now got teams right around the world. Um, here's why I'm confident about our value system. And I obviously using you know my bias, which is I'm American, I'm a citizen here, it's not exclusive to America by any stretch, but, but what I like about the, I'll call liberal democratic, lowercase d, lowercase l, ideals is that we embrace the collective, you know, we respect our responsibility to that collective, and yet we still protect that, that individual, mm. you know, and, and respect. And so now that creates a tension. Obviously, we have it in our system, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the line between my individual freedom and, and, and society's benefit, right? That's, but that's, I think, a healthy tension. So if we are moving to a world, and I think we are, in which broadly based 
knowns are knowns. There will always be unknown unknowns, but broadly based, the knowns are knowns. I bet on us because, and this is, might sound a little naive, but, but I believe we do have good intent, positive intent. Doesn't always have that effect, but that's our intent. And if the competition is, you know, between team A's method, manner, social compact versus team B's, I, again, like our chances. Yeah, in, the, um, in this age of, of, uh, of almost radical transparency like we've never had before, um, I, I tend to agree with you, right? Because, uh, you know, we do see conflict in one place spills over into another. Uh, we do see the, the impact of, of climate change and how that's impacting, you know, uh, the entire planet. And this shared context that we're having is something that the team can be changing. You know, we can identify as being, you know, inhabitants of planet Earth yeah. and recognizing the fact that we need to be stewards of that. Um, and so that's one of the things that I'm hoping, <laughs> um, counting on, um, is is for that to become more of a dominant frame and more of an identity that, uh, that individuals can have so that they can see who they are in their community, in their country, yep. on our shared planet. Um, now I'm gonna turn that into a question. Okay, well, Mary. please. Um, I don't know about you, Robbie, but I mean, we all, and we're all still experiencing our journey through the reality of, and the trauma of COVID. I'm just debating in my head if this is the, the most impactful lesson I've learned from it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. I felt incredibly earthling-like, hmm. <laughs> like I never had before. What I mean by that is I always had a strong sense of, you know, connection and, uh, you, know, I, you know, my career has been involved with allies and nations and, you know, people that don't live like us and, 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 and have different approaches to life. But boy, in many ways, while it was horrifying, it was also unifying. Because hmm. we really are all in this together. And, and it was a shared experience or almost like a trauma that we correct. all went through together. Yep. Correct. Uh, now I do worry about the lessons we learned from that, but, I, but, but being an optimist, I think there are the right ones or, or better ones. I don't want to put too much judgment on it, but better ones that could lead to an outcome in which that interconnectedness, that sense of, you know, what happens to me affects you and vice versa. And hmm, maybe we can live together in a better way going forward. Well, let's, let's, uh, Let's touch on that for a little bit. So in, in 2020, what we just got through, um, and if we, uh, what are those lessons that we should take into the future? Or put another way, if you're a historian looking back, uh, the year's 2030, you're looking back to 2020, what are those lessons that you think will be a through line that actually, um, that we should take forward into the future? I guess, Robbie, I'm, I'm a little more worried than I almost want to admit, because hmm. I worry about the negative uh, effects, the negative lessons that I think could be learned. Because you, you could imagine someone saying, yeah, I agree, we're terribly unconnected, but it was horrible because we were so interconnected, and why don't we find ways to break those connections? That worries me. You know, if, if only you know, we had better Fill in the blank. Uh, fill in the blank of barriers, uh, policies that inhibit movement. Uh, you know, immigration rule changes that would quote protect us from you know those unknown unknowns out there. Right, that protect you from that happening again. Then on the other side, it like limits your personal freedom. Right, and therein lies the tension. Exactly. And but I also. Well, I guess I would like that tension to be positive. So, you know, one, you know, big believer, the worst thing to do is to ignore the reality of said tension, right? Don't pretend it's not there, but deal with it. And so, again, I'm hesitating because to have a healthy conversation around that ten tension, I think takes a little bit more 
mutual trust that feels lacking these days. We tend to go into interactions with people either seeing what's on their lapel or how they're wearing their hair or what part of the country they come from and I'm going to imbue into that, oh, you're from the south, you're from the west, you know, you're this age or you have this background or you have this religious belief. And, and again, that's very human, right? We all have had, we're different and so how do we, how do you and I interact to create a positive outcome? But now there just feels like there's so much ammunition for the negative. And, yeah. and, and so I worry about that 2030 reflection. Um, so having gotten that out, what I would like to think, you know, that the benefit, the lessons learned is recognition of the interconnected nature of our world assigning and including to that recognition responsibility. Mm. That and, and that's a responsibility of, 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 of whom? Of earthlings. Of everyone. Of earthlings, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're really in this together. And my action or inaction has a cascading event. And you, you know, I, I think the more that we own that, I, I think we'll make better individual decisions. So I like what you said around inaction. It took me 18 minutes for you to <laughs> like what I said. So no. That's what I was going for. Um, because uh, it, it is true, that is a choice, right? And as you were saying, with more information, it breeds confidence into the decisions that mm -hmm. people are making. And uh, choosing not to act is still a choice. That's right? right. And so enabling greater transparency, making that accessible to every Earthling right. um, is an awakening to recognize that interconnectedness, but then also that it, it's, it's a responsibility upon us to, to make decisions in such a way that we know the ripple effect that that has. Right, right. It's um, worth recalling, sorry to interrupt, yeah, um, Supreme Court Justice Brandeis, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, he said sunlight is the best of disinfectants for democracies. And I love that because when I believe it, okay, the fact that light is good and that and, and clarity of action to include our governments, you know, especially those in control of power is good. And, 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 and by the way, I get the kind of irony that I carry with myself from the beginning of my career where sunlight was bad, okay? And we didn't allow it in. Now we did that for a different reason and, and again, I, it made sense for its time. But today, I, you said earlier, Robbie, radical transparency. I actually wanted to interject. I, I think it's beautiful transparency. I think it's wonderful transparency. But it's not radical? I, th I infer a negativity to radical. Mm. You may not. You yeah. may think radical well, I came as, at it from like cool. emancipator, um, emancipatory. Okay, fair. We can both own absolutely <laughs> um, but again but, but but by the way and be happy to talk about this more I'm not ignoring the fact that you know whether you call it radical or beautiful or wonderful transparency has another side to it it does right and that's that risk of you know personal privacy and civil liberties yeah um, I do want to touch, though, before before we close, um, around the tight relationship between um, our home planet, um, the uh, sustainability challenge that we have today, and uh, the security challenge. Um, how do you see those two things um, in a relationship with one another? Completely, totally, everything, all in. What do I mean by that? Look, um, hopefully at this point in our conversation, you, 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 you'll at least understand, if not appreciate my bias, which is everything's interconnected, right? All actions and all inactions you know, uh, have an effect on one another. And we're all just trying to make it through the day. And so if, that's, if those two things are true, it's incumbent upon us to seek to use that sunlight in the best way, appreciate the downside or the risk of, of to an individual or to a 
to a, to a, a sense of privacy, but then elevate it in a way that creates the outcome that improves both of our futures. Win-win. So let's let's end on a, on, on a high note. Um, what are some of the, uh, the trends or technologies that you think that this community, Earth Observation, um, that you're most excited about uh, over the next five to 10 years? I'm fascinated by the idea of how we could transfer knowledge more efficiently and effectively amongst one another. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that, not by you know, images or, or you know, cameras or sensing, what I mean is when I think of the power of machine learning and computer vision and ultimately artificial intelligence, I think of a way of synthesizing and sifting and, and finding pearls in ways that we just couldn't before. Mm. And um, I'm a tad bit older than you, Robbie, so you know, education was a little different for me than it is for you, but boy, am I excited about how I'm watching my grandchildren learn mm. in a very interactive way, even with the trauma of this past year and a half, the experience of being isolated and whatnot. And yet there's a resiliency that's actually quite exciting. Yeah. So I'm very hopeful and uh, I do, look, I'm not naive. I do appreciate that people could misuse and will misuse technology. It's just are. There's a lot of people on the planet. They're not all good. That said, I think the ma vast majority of us are and do have that positive intent, mutually beneficial outcome. And boy, if we can just harness that kind of way of communicating that knowledge base to that next generation, mm. what are they gonna discover? You know, and, 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 and what will they address that we couldn't? And so, very optimistic about our future, very excited. Well, thank you, Robert. And um, thanks for being a friend, um, a mentor, um, and a colleague now at Planet. So I'm delighted that you are helping us in this transition. Well, back at you, friend, mentor, and now colleague at Planet. And let me just say, Robbie, as you know, I've mentioned and you've kindly reflected on the wonderful career I was able to have as a civil servant in, 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 in service of our government. I can think of no better place for me now in this chapter than at Planet because I'm able to sustain my commitment to the profession, which I believe does sustain our security and our liberty. I'm able to assist in helping the next generation hmm. lift us to places that we're, we, we can't even imagine today, but also set the stage for that future that is better for all. So it's just a real pleasure to be here. Well, thank you, Robert. All right, well, these are hard questions and really important items uh, about the relative balance between our liberty, privacy, and security, but I could see a way through this. It's not gonna be easy, and we as a community will learn over time. So it's game on, and let's accelerate toward a more sustainable and secure planet. Thank you for watching.